Welcome and aloha. I'm Mark Schlaub, the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going across the sea of time. Now, there's been a dramatic rise in hate and violence in the world recently. Divisiveness seems to be the trend. The recent events have made me think about growing up, how I grew up in Hawaii. There was so much diversity, but inclusiveness was normal. Most of my professional legal career in Hawaii has involved dealing with clients and other lawyers across the sea, all over the world. Diversity and inclusiveness were normal in my professional and personal lives. Recently, I came across my class photo taken in 1961 when I was a fifth grader at Kapalama Elementary School. I felt a connection between the diversity and inclusiveness I found in Kapalama and my professional and personal lives. I also thought there might be lessons for the world to learn from that class photo. Two of my fifth grade classmates were Bill Wise and Henry Chalk. In this next photo, I've circled our faces. Uh, I'm in the front row, right in the middle. Bill is on the left side of the third row. And Henry is fourth in on the left side in the same row. Uh, I circled the faces so you could see who we were in those days. We were all good buddies. We'd walk across the Kapalama campus together. We were different, diverse, but we all accepted each other. Henry and Bill accepted me. And although I was this immigrant Canadian boy, I felt like I was a local boy. I, I still do. Now, after the fifth grade, we all went to different schools. Uh, Bill went to Kamehameha, Henry to St. Louis. I went to Punahou, and many of our classmates from Kapalama went to Farrington. Now, although over 60 years has passed, our friendship with Bill and Henry, myself, has endured. Henry is a retired sales agent, route sales agent, and lives in Spokane, Washington. Bill is a farmer, lives in Wahiwa on Oahu. I've recently reconnected with both of them when Henry returned to Hawaii for a visit. There's a photo of us at the restaurant when we had lunch together. Henry and Bill are my guests today. I'd like to welcome them. Aloha, guys. How are you? Aloha, Mark. Aloha, Mark. Good, good, good. I'm glad we're all together. Uh, I know you're all busy. Yes. And uh, let's get to it. I, I wanted to ask you both to share your memories and what you've learned from attending Kapalama Elementary School during our very formative years in the 1960s. So Bill, let's start with you. What are your memories of attending Kapalama Elementary School in the 60s? Well, thanks, Mark. Uh, uh, there are many memories, and I think one of the memories that stand out for me is exactly this uh, this topic that you've chosen, the, the kinds of people that uh, we were with, different kinds of people, the, that diversity. Uh, that, and that includes the teachers that we had throughout uh, our elementary years, from for me, from kindergarten through sixth grade there at Papaloma, all those teachers were wonderful. And of course, this, our fellow students certainly helped me to, uh, to actually understand, understand what learning was all about. And because of these relationships, I actually enjoyed uh, learning things, especially math and science, that those two things I, I really enjoyed. And uh, the diversity was, it was there and the inclusiveness was cer certainly there. But we, I don't think we thought about it 
very much then because it all felt so natural. And, and, and that's what I think about. Right, yeah. It, Henry, what, what are your thoughts? Especially when you look at that picture, all the different kids, what, what were your memories and thoughts about Kapalama Elementary School? I think we had uh, diversity. It was obviously, again, in reminiscing and looking at that picture, um, quite a lot of different races. But in the public school system, you're living in a particular area. You you see all of these people um, in your neighborhood. So you're, you're familiar with that. And then going to school and studying together and playing together. And uh, the teachers uh, was a big part of that including everyone and, uh, you know, teaching us and being fair. Uh, you know, we came from homes where we're taught to respect your elders. So when you went to school, your teacher was one of your elders. And, uh, you know, I think they had an easier time to for teaching uh, because we grew up kind of the neighborhood, grew up together, kids knew each other. And, uh, you know, it started with respect maybe for each other, but also for elders and our teachers so that i think they had an easier time of uh, teaching us and working with us as as young young children and you both mentioned teachers and, and who was our teacher um in the fifth grade hoboki is that how you miss yeah she mm -hmm. was really mm -hmm. nice and all the teachers were really nice and they they she's over on the right hand side there and they they didn't scold you. I mean, they made you learn lessons uh, by just talking. It seems, and you you learned the right thing to do just without without being put on the spot, right, Henry? I think so. Um, I I liked my fifth grade teacher. She was very very nice. Uh, it seemed like she was nice. Just always had a smile. You felt comfortable around her, and uh, you know she worked with everyone. There's 34 in that class. You know, uh, there's a lot of students to just be. You know, so I think it was a mutual thing where we as students were students, and it was a little easier time to uh, be there and uh, listen to her direction. She was a very. I think she was cool at that time. Yeah. Yeah, and, and 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 you're both right. I mean, we we didn't. We just thought this was normal. We we accepted the the way it was. Um, Bill, you know, uh, there were a lot of kids. Were, was there any talk about race or religion or anything like that in in any of our classes that you can remember? No, I I can't remember any negative words about someone's religion nor about someone's race now i know here in hawaii we always tease each other you know uh, you know the hawaiians get teased for something the portuguese of course get teased for, for other things and the chinese japanese the holidays all the stuff but um none of that came into play th that i can remember nobody was singled out specifically because of their race, nor do I remember people getting singled out because they look different or they may have had some kind of uh, handicap. I don't know what the handicap might have been, but people who might have actually been different were never treated that way, especially in the classroom. That part I remember. In the classroom, Miss Laboki, she obviously had some, some kids that were quite quite quick to learn things and other kids who maybe took a while to learn a particular uh, subject matter. But she never, that I remember, she never had anybody stand out. She, she, she acted like we were all trying to learn something together and she treated us that way. Yeah, all, all of us kids, we were just, we were treated equal. I mean, that's a lesson mm -hmm. there, I think. I mean, when you, if if everybody went to that class, maybe a lot of this divisiveness and violence that we're facing nowadays, I mean, the world's not won't be perfect, but maybe that would have helped. Um, Henry, I mean, 
taking a look at the picture again, are there any kids in, in that photo that you remember or that uh, stand out to you also? Well, you know, there's three three guys that uh, lived close to where I lived and we kind of walked to school together, walked home together after school. Uh, one was uh, Alfred Abru, and uh, his mom was a Cub Scout leader, so I was involved in Cub Scout with him. And uh, he's Portuguese. Um, there's a Wilfred Martin who's Filipino, and he lived uh, about a block away from my house. So we would all gather and end up. My house was the closest to the school, so we gather there and then uh, head on walking to walking to school. Um, and then Warren Matsumoto, Japanese, and he lived up up the road a little bit more, but. Um, you know, we never really were buds. You know, we weren't uh, really talking about, oh, you're Filipino or you're, you're this and you're that. Uh, we got along and, and uh, we had a good time. So, yeah. Maybe if kids walk to school together, even <laughs> though they're different races and different ethnicities and different religions, maybe, maybe, you know, they may not be best friends, but maybe they'd learn to live together in peace and harmony some way or at least not in such a violent world. Uh, um, I remember John Kalma, Karen Ng, uh, um, Linda G, uh, Milton Wan, uh, Lloyd Watanabe, all, all of those folks and, and others. I mean, we, we were just, uh, we, we just got along and it, it was being all together, I think. Uh, Bill, what, what are your thoughts? Well, Especially at recess time, uh, you you got to interact with kids in a totally different way as opposed to being in the classroom. So I used to try and hang out with the guys that were fast. And Johnny Kelma, Lloyd Watanabe, those guys, they were always the, the, the quick guys. And I, I wanted to hang out with them because I wanted to learn how to run fast. Uh, but I also, hung out with other people because they had different skills. Uh, some guys could play basketball. Now, we never had real baskets. I don't know if you remember, we had a post with a thing that looked like a, a metal basket on top with mm -hmm. chains on it that uh, replaced, that would, that would be in place of uh, the laces that they have on baskets now. Uh, but it wasn't didn't even resemble a basket like uh, kids have today, but there were like four or five of them in the playground. So we played basketball and that, you know, basketball, you're, you're close to each other. And that introduced me to how, how people take care of themselves when, when they're stressed, you know. And then the other thing that you mentioned uh, was walking to and from school. That was a big deal because Every morning, you'd catch up with different people. You know, every, I never left home at exactly the same time ever. Um, I, I rarely made it to school on time ever either. But as you walk to school, you'll, you'll meet somebody else walking along the way uh, to school, and you'd be with them for like five or ten minutes, maybe not saying much, but oftentimes having a short conversation about something and learning about them and you learn about yourself too I, I love the walking to and from school that was that was always good yeah and and maybe that's the way you learn to live with people like henry was saying too just just walking with them and talking as you say now yeah. we, we all we all went to different schools after kapalama uh and those mm -hmm. schools competed in football, basketball, you name it, especially football and basketball. Now, yeah. I, when, when I went, you know, I, I was at Punahou, and, and yet when, I, when we had games against St. Louis or Kamehameha, I'd kind of, I'd, I'd still feel good about you guys. I'd still feel like you might be over there or, you know, playing or in, in, somehow involved. And I didn't feel animosity. Even though we were competing, I mean, did you have any feelings? Also, Farrington, Farrington, the same thing. A lot of our classmates went to Farrington. So, do you, do you have any, Henry? Do you, do you have any thoughts about it? Do you feel the same way, or did that 
Kapalama experience help you in that respect? Well, I think Kapalama helped. Um, uh, it was a little different because um, you weren't from a particular neighborhood. You were from, could have been from that whole island, from parts of the island. Uh, we even had some classmates that were from Maui that were uh, attending St. Louis. And, you know, there was a diversity. There was a military uh, uh, presence, uh, students from the military base that would come to school in St. Louis. Uh, so, we, you know, it was a bigger, bigger uh, diversity. Uh, so, you know, the diversity that we learned to learn in and play with when we were young at Kapalama, uh, should help, would have, uh, did help uh, learning the different uh, diversities as we as I went to St. Louis. Bill, how about Kamehameha? What, I mean, you kind of think of Kamehameha being all Hawaiian, uh, but was there any diversity or how, how did you feel? How did Kapalama help you there? Well, Kapalama certainly helped because uh, there were there, there were so many different ethnicities at Kapalama. Uh, and the same actually held true for uh, Kamehameha. There were guys with Japanese last names, Filipino last names, and guys that, that totally looked like Hawaii guys, but they were like half Hawaiian or something like that. It was just incredible but because at a young age in elementary school we were exposed to people that were different but because we never treated them differently uh as, as we go to high school and then on to college you learn to just see like right through their skin or right through whatever it is we're looking at and and wonder what is this person really like? Now, oftentimes you don't get an opportunity to, to come, to get really close to somebody, but because of the experience at Kapalama, I was willing to like, just be open and for myself to be open and then think that somebody, the person I was uh, speaking to, I'm thinking he's open too, why, why would it be, why would he be anything else, right? He, he would be just as open as I am. And so conversations could, could flow between people. And, uh, and that's what, what happened. Conversations were able to flow between people that I met at Command Mail. And, uh, you know, obviously, we all still have friends from high school uh, that we, we still keep in touch with. Yeah. With all, especially... Especially Puno, uh, St. Louis, Kamehameha, all the alumni associations are pretty strong, and everybody kind of keeps in touch one way or another. Yeah, you know, and and the interesting thing that you mentioned is that inclusion was normal. I mean, we even because of our experience, the, the three of us had this experience where every, even though people look different and maybe even talk different and were different. But and it, it may not have been perfect, and it, and it may not have been, you know, wonderful. But we included everybody. We, regardless of the diversity, that, that was a, what I found was very helpful, especially as I got into my professional life as a lawyer, because it just was normal. I mean, inclusion was normal. I didn't think twice about it. How about you guys? Um, you know, uh, Henry, in your professional life. Uh, you're on the mainland now. What has have you found any connection there with uh, your Kapalama education and and what you've done is in in your job? It's kind of funny because uh, I went to California first, and uh, they really weren't sure whether I was Mexican or Indian or whatever. And so that was always interesting because as we got talking and learned more about each other, uh, um, we got to play football there. So I hung around with the football team. So that was kind of a natural where we were able to, uh, you know, share where we're from and easier opening uh, conversation, obviously, just through sports and uh, uh, being together all the time. 
but even during classes, uh, you know, they once they found out I was from Hawaii, things kind of changed. Uh, they're a little more open. They wanted to know more about Hawaii. Uh, that was exactly the same when I moved to uh, Spokane, Washington in 72. Uh, uh, they weren't sure if I was Alaskan or Indian or, or Black or what I was, but uh, it actually started conversations. <laughs> Where are you from? You know, and all of this. So, uh, you know, it, it just made it a lot easier because uh, we were used to that. Growing up in Kapalama and kind of progressed through high school, and then now you're you're out, you know, you're in a different country, country, but you know, state. What I'm talking about, and uh, you know, different diversity. So it's a it's part of you learning as well as them learning each other. So the communication was open. Um, I, you know, you you wanted to know. And that's what made it. Made it uh, made it easier, so I, I, yeah, that yeah, helped and, me. And and just I think having that background and that education of and just accepting others made it a lot easier for that conversation to happen. Now, now, Bill, do you do you think this is just? I mean, you 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 both kind of said maybe because we're from Hawaii. I think. Is it just because we are from Hawaii? Is that what this is about? Or is this something that can can be broader? Bill? It can it can be broader, I'm sure, but because I because I'm from Hawaii and I think because we're we're all from Hawaii, the we're kind of prejudiced to think that there's something special here. Uh and I, I, I do think that I do think that there is something special here, um, uh, where we we are a lot easier on other people regarding accepting them or not. Uh, you know, I was in the fire department for about almost twenty years, and uh, like at Kamehameha, I, I boarded at Kamehameha. So when you get into the fire department, you board. You know, you you board for ten days, for ten days a, a month. You sleep in there in the quarters, um, and it's not you. You don't have a choice about whether you're going to get along with people. You have to get along with people, because these other guys want to know that on the job, you you have their back. There's the, you you can't be thinking twice about that. You you all have to have trust in each other. And so if you, like we did, if you had come from a background where you trusted people, uh, where people trusted you, and that's, I really did get that from a couple of them. Uh, just without being reluctant, just trusting people, it made my career in the, the department a, a whole lot easier. Uh, for me, there's one other thing I was thinking about as as uh, Henry was talking about this idea of the the atmosphere as we were growing up uh, that made it feel that in spite of the fact that we were so diverse, in spite of that fact, there is inclusion. And uh, the two things that struck me uh, in our generation was one, uh, the world. The Second World War had ended, what, 12, 13 years, which is a short period of time, 12, 13 years prior to our being in the third, fourth, fifth grade. And that had changed the world. A lot of people looked at the world differently after the Second World War, and thank goodness we won that. And the other thing that happened right as we were at Kapalama, uh, in, I think it was our, in the third grade, uh, statehood. So uh, we were now going to be, as far as statehood was concerned, in spite of the fact that Hawaii was different, we as a state were going to be included in this great country. And, you know, we were included as, as a territory for sure, but it was so uh, 
nice to know that the United States was going to accept us and become a part of of the great country that that we're privileged to live in. You know, um, we have a couple minutes left, and I, I kind of want to close on taking another look at that photo, that class photo. I want to ask you both. I mean, you know, we we were all different, but we we were we just walked down the campus together. We we played together. We lived together. We didn't have any prejudice. Uh, and again, I'm not saying the world is perfect, but is right. there something that we can all learn? Henry, we'll start with you and, and Bill, and then after that, but what can the world learn from the Kapalama Elementary School photo and education that we had? Henry. I think the inclusiveness and being able to talk to each other, communication, you know, communication. Uh, actually, speaking as we're speaking and looking at each other in the face. Um, and, you know, computers and uh, phones and texts and, you know, social media has uh, taken a lot of face-to-face -face communication. Uh, the fact that people knew I was from Hawaii opened the conversation for that conversation to continue, I needed to find out where this gentleman was from, where this girl was from, and talk about them and their life and understanding where they're from and they understand where I'm from. Uh, so um, I think open communication. Um, as the teachers, as our teachers taught us and included everyone, uh, um, you know, we we grew up in, a, uh, I, I think, a easy, fun time because we're able to enjoy so many things that uh, uh, just being around each other, just playing, uh, you know, the basketball, the kind of hoop we had and all that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, uh, the teachers made that available. The, the students, we got along. That picture, I laugh because I look at it and I look at the dress of the student. And the girls, how prim and proper they were in their dresses. And the guys, mm -hmm. some of them had shoes, some of them had, didn't have shoes. Uh, but, you know, we're not for recess. We got, got along. We had a good time. And, you know, I still remember their names. Just like Bill remembers names, you remember names. And, uh, you know, uh, trying to get in touch with them and talk to them and try to find out where they're at. You kind of got that rolling. So, so. Yeah, I need to continue to do that. So, thank you, Mark. Bill, Bill what, what about what about you? What can the world learn? I mean, I, I heard, heard what Henry said, and that is, we learn about that we're different, but that enhances the conversation. Bill, what what are your thoughts? I think it absolutely does enhance the conversation, but it makes me think that, you know, the Lord's been good to all of us, and He includes us in his kingdom and for now where i'm in my life I, i'm realizing that having a place where you feel comfortable be it elementary school college um, or as we we're, were an adult it's so comforting to be in a place where you know where you know you're accepted for who you are and i i think maybe in our culture now, kids are either they're trying to become adults too quickly or adults are trying to make kids grow up too quickly. I sure would appreciate it if children just are allowed to be children and grow up in, in the manner in which we grew up. Yeah. I think that would be fantastic. And that was growing up together, even though we were different diverse, we included each other. And yes. thank you. Aloha, my Kapalama fifth grade classmates. I appreciate okay. you very much. Thank you for talking about this. I wish the world could live and go to school as we did in the fifth grade at Kapalama. I think it would, it would help out a lot. So aloha to both of you. Mahalo. Aloha, Mark. Thank you.